Do the lines as they're supposed to be done. Yeah, you fool. I won't do it. I will not. You can cast George Goble in this part for all I care. I'm leaving. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. I have an idea. I have an idea. Instead of Shakespeare, let's do Beach Blanket Bingo. Everybody dance. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bob Rice, and welcome to Teenage. Today's subject is high school theater. Later on in the show, we'll be talking to Nancy Woodruff, who's a technical director at York High School, and Janine Stromer, who has graduated from Northern Illinois University with a major in theater and is now an actress in Chicago. Um, how many of you have been in a high school production of theater? Well, I, I have, like, for, you know, since freshman year. Mm -hmm. And, I don't know, I don't when I was little, I was in a lot of plays. Snoopy. <laughs> I was a Snoopy too, but I was Lucy. I was. I was. We're Lucy. doing that this How year, and I, I want to be Lucy part. so bad. <laughs> I was You're Lucy so Maria. I was too. But um, do you think that's like some subliminal message, maybe? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe not. Um, anybody else been in theater? Yeah, high I've school? been involved in theater through high school. Go down to theater fest and do a couple productions. I was in school. theater fest, and so was Bob. Yeah, I saw you guys when he told me that. I was like, oh. I so Sean, watching. have you ever been in any uh, high school theater? Yeah, I was. Uh, I'm in the school speech team and one time I went on stage and I had to go up there by myself and I forgot everything. <laughs> I forgot Isn't that your everything. Fear? I did that in eighth grade once. I was doing a play, it was P.T. Barnum. And I like, I said the line too soon. I was all excited, it was my first line in a play. And I said it real soon, you know. It was, it was, it was, and then I found out what I did and I just went blank. I had to go get the script. I was on stage with the script, figure out like, I everything, everything. But it was there's a theater classes. Do one of you guys take theater classes? I took I know, theater I'm class theater. in high school. I'm yeah, I'm in theater, theater now. Class. Like we don't have any theater Our school doesn't even have theater classes. Neither do we. Neither does yeah, our school, our school is one class. One class, but that's nothing. That's about it. I was at a uh, five-week course at Northwestern, though, this summer, and that was really cool. Yeah. How'd, you, how'd you get into that? Um, it was just an application kind of thing. I got it in the mail, and I applied, and I made it. And uh, it was great. It was. It taught me a lot. Have you ever been in? No, our, I've been in plays and stuff, like in grammar school and stuff, uh -huh. but like my high school, they don't have any kind of theater. It's like vocational school, so it's more uh -huh. like, you know, like for jobs and college. Yeah. Do you think theater in high school is really underrated? I mean, do you think we yes. really need it a lot more, yeah. or are you kind of happy with the pro programs you have? I like the theater class, except when it comes to plays and trying out for plays. Because use the usually, same one over and over. No, usually the teachers are... Biased. You know, favorites to some students. Yeah. So why bother trying out for it? You know, they have they have it a predestined yeah. part for the person, and that I mean, you have that almost everywhere you go. You're not going to get. I mean, they have that in plays that you try out for, like in Chicago. They they know the people. They've worked with them before, mm -hmm. and maybe you have to be really good in order to like establish yourself. Yourself, you know. Yeah. That's what I think it's a nice. And yeah, then if you get one part. And you're, and you're good in that one part, then they'll just stereotype you and keep putting you in those right. same it's yeah, yeah, it's a stereotypical character. Mm, definitely. You have. The white words. Good vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> really. Well, what kind, of, like, what kind of characters have you been like stereotyped as? Um, I always get the characters who, um, I, I classify them as promiscuous, I guess. I always play the bad girl. Me too. Always the bad girl. And they say, oh, because it's your dark hair. And I'm like, well, is that fair to me? <laughs> I wanted the bad girl. I like the, like the play the leading lady, lady, the good girl the for ladies. once. No, wait a minute. I played in a play. I played a Catholic school girl. No. Oh. You? you? Like John Lennon in a play. In a play called The Ground Zero Club. It was like, as the world's about to end. And I played the Catholic school girl in it. <laughs> now tell me, you guys are playing the bad girls? I love this. <laughs> I usually either, they always put me in either like the real funny characters or the snotty ones. 
and <laughs> but you, know what, you know what? I was in Peter Pan and I was Wendy, and that was fun. But I'm playing a hooker now, and I have to say, <laughs> it's so much more challenging. It's 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 fun to play, isn't it? I mean, yeah, like, it is. Ah, yeah. But then this way, you're like, yeah, I'm bad. You get, to, you, get to, you get to do something you don't normally do, you know? Exactly. I was in a play, um, the Toy Soldier, and I we were and both I was in like play. a princess, and oh. I did not have to say anything. They just wanted me to sit there. It was and so I was just fun. Like, I was my hair was long and it was blonde and stuff, and I just had to like stand there like the whole the whole play. I I was in the same play with her. I was in the same play, and I was the evil Jack in the Box. Yeah. I have trouble Thank making you. plays because of the way I look, because with my hair. So I have oh. trouble making plays. But they're they have like, wigs, though. Not, they don't believe in wigs in my school or something. <laughs> they believe in wigs no, in my school. No, that happened to me in my freshman year. My freshman year, I had, I had all this shaved, and they wouldn't give me a part. They're That's like, what you're my too different. That's what my school's going to be like. They're like, well, give me a well you know, you couldn't have a part. Well, that's really interesting. We'll be right back with our two guests on High School Theater, and stay tuned. You were the first in this family to uh, get into college. I'm so proud of you. I can't go, can I? I just can't afford to send you. You didn't mean to let you down. I understand. Maybe next year. Maybe. Hard-working students deserve a chance. Please, support the United Negro College Fund. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. Starting a new relationship is pretty scary. It's hard to discuss something personal, but now with the threat of AIDS... First of all, going out with someone does not mean you have to go to bed with them. Take the time to get to know each other. And if the time is right for sex, well, remember, he's worried about it too, so talk about protection. Just be honest. Tell him you don't want to take chances. And sex just isn't cool without condoms for protection. Don't take chances. Help protect yourself against AIDS. People who deal in drugs ride in expensive cars. The same can be said about people who use drugs. If you or someone you know has a drug problem, call Habilitat before you get the ride of your life. Hi, welcome back to Teenage. Today's subject is high school theater. In studio, we have with us Nancy Woodruff, who is the technical director at York High School, and Janine Stromer, who is just graduated from Northern Illinois University right. with a degree in theater, right. and is now working on getting in shows in Chicago. Right. Um, Janine, how did you start? What was your first acting experience? My very first one, I think, was in fourth grade. I don't think that one counts. I played a boy. Uh. <laughs> I, my first real role in high school was Lucy and You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. And uh, I know a couple of you were talking <laughs> about too. that. Um, and then from then on, it just, it just kept going. It got good after that. After I stopped playing boys, it was OK. <laughs> what did, do you, you, did you ever act before you went into teaching or inst instructing acting? For me? Yeah. Yes, I did. In yes, high I acted in high school. I acted in college, even though I knew that the aspect of theater I really wanted to major in was tech. Um, I like being on stage. It's fun. I enjoyed it. Did you have that dream like you wanted to make it? Um, I already knew that uh, there were lots of jobs in tech theater and that I would be able to make a living doing that. And so uh, I, I really never spent any time thinking about seriously that I wanted to act. Really? Mm-hmm. What about you? Did you want to make it? I mean, do you still? Like I don't think, <laughs> you I think making it, no, it is, is a very um, loose kind of term. You know, what do you consider making, making it? it mm -hmm. I'm not going to be the next Glenn Close. You know, I, I, I'm making it very realistic for myself, saying that if I can make a living working and doing what you like, doing what I like, then that's good, even if I have to work another job, because that's being very realistic. Um, yeah. You know, unless you can make a good living doing commercials, which is good, or TV, mm -hmm. You know, and, and getting there is the problem. You know, yeah. once you get there, then you're okay. But getting there is, is a long, tough struggle. So if I could actually 
make a living, uh, even with even if it's with another job, then I'd be okay. That's making it for me. That other job we hear of struggling actors and actresses having this waitress job. What is some of the weird jobs that you've ever had? Um, there's a lot. I worked, with, I worked at school. I worked with handicapped students. Um, I've done construction. Um, I am now part-time waitress. I uh, have a full-time job where I work at uh, with data entry. Um, geez, there's been lots of odd and end jobs. I worked at a costume shop, which was very beneficial to me as an actress to learn uh, about uh, what everyone has to go through to get that piece of fabric on you and make sure it fits right and looks good. There's a, um, I don't know, there's just a lot of different things that you find yourself involved with when you're Because auditions that. that you have to do, aren't they like in the morning or in the... Depends. It depends. Depends on I where... For commercials, they're usually in the morning. Daytime. Yeah. Well, so. what kind of um, problems, like what kind of major transitions did you have to change between high school theater and college theater? The major trans... Major transitions. What was, what was the big difference between The big them? difference was, and I think we, we were talking about yeah. this earlier, was that there's a lot more opportunity for a person in college theater because it's not just your major productions. Mm -hmm. Okay, there are student workshops where you can be seen by faculty and directors. There's also more of a non-traditional approach to casting, which I find is very helpful, would be helpful to people like you, you know. I got, I got stereotyped in high school as the mother figure. Never pay, played a romantic lead until they finally gave me one my senior year that just totally wasn't fit for me. And I started doing a lot of age differences. I started playing romantic leads. I started um, getting a lot of good, challenging roles that really let me grow. You know, people were willing to take more of a chance. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you sometimes say, like, if this isn't worth it, like when you're, you know, being in construction or something, do you sometimes like ready to just like give up? Yes. I also have, um, I have a degree in, in theater education. So I've done a lot of acting and I, I eventually would like to do that, but I haven't ruled out the possibility that at some point in my life I will say, chuck it and just go and, um, like I would actually like to teach at some point because that's, that's just a part of me. Acting is not the only thing that I'm going to limit myself to because there probably will be a point where I'm grasping for security and won't find it on the stage. Well, how do your parents feel about it? Because I know my parents would be freaking out. You want to be an actress? <laughs> at first, uh, when I started in high school, really getting involved, my parents weren't really thrilled. It meant a lot of late nights, a lot of after school because I was involved in not only theater but in music and speech team and a lot of other things. And, um, you know, they'd moan and, 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 and about <laughs> not being home. And then when the show came, they were always right there. They were calling relatives to buy tickets and everything, and they were very supportive when it came down to that. They applauded my choice to go ahead and get a teaching degree as well because they said that was being a lot more realistic. Yeah, and then something to fall back on. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, fall back on. Mrs. Yeah. W., you said that uh, earlier um, Jeannie said that she was... Uh, in parts that didn't really fit her. Uh, you audition uh, students at York Theater for the plays. Do you ever, is you have a hard time finding the right people for the right plays? Have you ever felt you put the wrong person in there after the play's over? Or? Well, two things. First of all, as technical director, I'm responsible for design and construction of all the scenery. I play a very minor role as far as casting. The director and I have a real good working relationship, and so he appreciates it if I attend auditions and appreciates my input, but I do not have the final decision. Do you, do you feel, um, since you're so, you know, working in high school theater, do you feel that high school theater is biased? Do you feel that, yeah, <laughs> my school is, mine is. Yeah. Sure. I'm not going to kid you at all. What happens is that a director chooses a season. They have to do, choose the plays that they're going to do based on what talent pool that they have. You cannot... Uh, you know, decide you're going to do Sound of Music if you don't have a strong soprano. You just can't do it. So that's limiting. Um, we, she and I, Jeannie and I were talking about this in detail, uh, her own experiences being so recent. And uh, it's very true that there is more uh, rigid casting in high school than there is in college. You have to remember that most high school directors are managing two full-time jobs. One of them is their full-time teachers, and the other one is 
that they're directors and and it's a labor of love the money is never worth it <laughs> which means that um, they're eventually going to take and cut some corners to save themselves so they're going to see people in those parts and um, they try to be open-minded they try to give new people a, a chance but uh, they do get tunnel vision I, I, I could never deny that. So what do you say to the high school student that that sees this and says well forget it I'm not going into it if this is how it is. Do it. Oh. Still audition. You you know there was a, the probably worst experience in my high school career was knowing that I was going to be in the, the musical Oliver and that I was the only possible choice for Nancy. I really was. I had the voice, I, I had the acting experience and the girl that cast was someone who had a totally different voice, no acting experience and which I thought you know she just killed the role. But I gave up, I did that show, and I gave up another role that would have been better in a different production. And, you know, I said to myself, if I didn't go for this role of Nancy, I would have never known if I could do it or not. You know, I mean, it's not even, I had an idea I wouldn't get cast in it, although in my heart I knew I was the best choice for it. But if I would have said, oh, I'm not going to get it, I'll do something else, you have to go ahead and do it because that's the only way you're going to be able to find out someone may cast you. Right. You never know right. that. You can't mm -hmm. say, the director, I know this person's going to get it, even though if you, if you really think it's true, you've got to go out there and try it. Yeah, well, that's a good point. Um, we'll be right back with our two guests after we take the short commercial break. There's only one man who can help me. Batman? Batman. Batman? Holy complications. Batman! Holy missing relatives. Batman! Holy co-creeps. Batman! Holy, here we go again, Batman. I'm afraid you're right, old chum. Very good. Holy tartars. What's that supposed to mean? That's what we'd all like to know. Batman on the Family Channel. Wake up with MTV. Wake up! Wake up! What's happening to Zeddy Money? Wake up! Hi, welcome back to Teenage, where we're continuing our talk about high school theater. In the studio with us, we have Janine Stromer, who has just graduated from Northern Illinois University, who has got a degree in theater, and Nancy Woodruff, who is the technical director at York High School. I have a question. I'm going to be auditioning for the role of Lucy in our high school production. I was wondering, what kind of uh, tips do you have for auditioning? Well, in my experience, one of the things that I see in high school actors is that they don't prepare well enough for an audition. And uh, uh, probably my best advice would be, I, I know at York what we do is the scripts are available in the library on a reserved basis. You can check them out overnight. Pick a section that you really think you can do a good job with and uh, audio tape yourself reading it so that you can play it back and hear because we don't hear ourselves the way we actually sound right. and it'll really provide you with some clues about what you want to do and the second thing is look the part when you audition that's right that's what my ma said that's correct <laughs> don't be afraid oh, there you go there you go there are other ma things you know as far as being also yes. in being prepared after you've taped yourself see look at the script see which words you chose to like emphasize or where you paused or and see how you can improve or change it you don't want to be stagnant ever even in an audition if you have to do the same thing twice always make it a little bit different also look at yourself in a mirror and see what you're doing with your body are, you know are you like this are your hands going all over the place <laughs> do you look goofy do you look like you know what you're doing okay i think that's the same thing that you find in college theater and probably all professional if you're not prepared they're not even going to look at you and I hate to say it, but it's true, first impressions count big time. If I went in like this, I probably wouldn't get anything. You have to, you know, go like you're going for business. You know, you were saying you didn't get a lot because maybe of the way your yeah. hair is. And that's going to be a, a big part of it. And, yeah. and you, you don't want to sell yourself out because you want to be yourself. Mm -hmm. But sometimes... Uh, you have to give them what they want. <laughs> sometimes you got to just bite 
the bullet and yeah. say, okay, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. You know, I'm going to go a little conservative because now, I want this role. How do, you, how do you go into acting? What would you say? What would be the best way to get into it? From high get a school. Okay. Obviously, you're going to pick a school. You're going to pick a college with a decent program. Mm -hmm. One of the things you want to look at is uh, how many productions do they do a year? What are the opportunities for actors in those productions? What kind of variety? Do they have guest directors? These are all opportunity things doesn't have to be the biggest school. Take a look at what kind of placement programs they have after graduation. Where are their people working? Where are they going? Are they working? Are they working? <laughs> <laughs> Big question. Exactly. Yes. Well, mm -hmm. Janine, I want to start acting. And my mom mentions, which I dread, she's like, I want a portfolio done on you so we can have, take it with the, res with the resume. Do you think that's necessary, all those pictures? A portfolio for an actor is really not a necessary thing unless uh, you're like with one company for a long time or something and they want to see the portfolio shows range okay when you're going in for an audition they just want to see you and right now the move is toward the more natural you this would be okay for my picture because this is a natural me okay um, we don't want to see your hair all coiffed we don't want to see you <laughs> with all the makeup on and we want to see what we're gonna get what are we gonna get if we hire you and so what we want is a, a good professional shot, which is um, a natural you with your resume. And that's about all you'll need. How many, uh, <laughs> how many interviews do you say an average actor goes on in a year? An audition? Yeah. It depends how badly you want to act, how much money you have, and how much time you have. Um, I haven't gone on many because I have a full-time job, a part-time job. I'm trying to save money to pay up my school loans, which you'll all come in contact with. Uh, and I'm, I'm not fully ready to go into that yet. You know, so I would say it depends on how, how strongly you're into it at the point. Do you have an agent or how do you find no. out about auditioning? Or? There's a non-equity hotline, which is um, available to anybody. And they are always looking for all age groups and ethnic types Wait, and what's everything. The phone number? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us. Uh, I don't Call have now. it offhand, but know. we'll get it for you. Um, Ask your parents before calling. There's, a, <laughs> there's, there's always the newspaper. Mm -hmm. They're listed. Okay. There's community theaters. There. If, please get involved in community theater because every time you get on stage, it's another experience for you. Like even if you have a, a role that uh, you don't think you're, you're good in or you're fit for, okay? Um, go ahead and, and just do it and bite your tongue and just go through with it because that's what you need to do. The more experience you have on stage, the more you know, the more prepared you will be. When, nope. <laughs> when starting, do you think um, you could get, find more work if you have an agent or, or do you uh, think it's better to have an it agent? It depends on your agent. I think that you know, if you have someone who you really trust and who will go in there and uh, look for parts and, yeah, I think it is better. It's less strain on you. <laughs> <laughs> now, acting, I mean, theater in general is just a huge field. Most people just see the acting part of it, which is right. probably, you know, the least uh, supportive part or the most dangerous part to be out. But now, Mrs. W, you're involved with technical theater, and there's a huge demand. Mm -hmm. That's correct. There are many more jobs than there are qualified people. You know, it's, some of it's just an image problem. You go backstage to a theater and here's these people in lovely costumes and makeup walking around and there's very few of them. And then there are all kinds of people in grungy jeans and t-shirts. <laughs> well, which would you rather be? I mean, what can I say? But the truth of the matter is, is that most of those people have at least five years of college and a number of specialty areas. Uh, the field of technical theater is uh, just booming. There's no other words to describe it. Uh, you know how many more movies they're making in Chicago. You know how much television is shot here. You know how many plays are put on here. Well, for every cast member, there are at least two technical people behind every single one of those productions. And maybe you just can't ever see yourself as a carpenter. How about a scenic artist? We're desperate for scenic artists. Um, there are wonderful new college programs. Uh, it used to be you could only get advanced degrees in design, for example. Not anymore. Wonderful new programs. Theater technician, theater engineering. Two schools in the country are now offering theater engineering degrees. 
uh, it, that really the future is unlimited in it. And I'm talking about good livings. You said good living. Oh, yeah. Um, scenic art. <laughs> you said scenic yeah. art is starting to demand. Um, when you audition, yes. I don't know if you do it at York, but I might be asking you, do you audition in the scene actually with all the set and everything? Oh, no. Oh, no. no? Most of the time, you're in a box. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it could be in a classroom. It could be anywhere. Um, but going back to what she was saying, that my final semester at college, I decided not to act, that I better look to something else just to see what was out there. And there's many opportunities, like she said, in those areas, but don't, don't overlook makeup, costume design, yes. stage oh. management. There's a, sound design is actually being you know, sought out right now. There are a lot of opportunities that if you keep banging your head on the acting wall, you know, look for something else. There's a lot out there. Get in the back way if you have to get in. Yeah, Mrs. W, because you said before when we were talking that um, the way to get into acting is going through technical to be seen. Now, what exactly do you mean by well, that? Well, what happens is, you know uh, there, there are a number of equity houses in Chicago, and then you know some of the big ones that aren't all equity, right. but then you also know that there are hundreds of companies in Chicago where those people are operating out of storefronts and church basements, and they make the reader, they get reviewed in the Tribune from time to time. Those people are all doing this for nothing. And they are acting and they are building all the scenery themselves and they are painting themselves and they are doing their own makeup. But I want to tell you that the theater community watches its own. They do. The people who are casting the big shows are in those audiences too. And they are looking for people all the time. So you go and you audition and uh, this night we don't read lines, this night we build scenery. The more you can make yourself useful, the more likely you are to be working. Well, thank and you very that's much. Um, thank that was very helpful, both of you. Thanks for being on the show. And thanks for watching. Um, hope to see you again on Teenage.